when you got the job on Moonlight, um, for those who haven't seen it, I have seen it, which is really yes. an extraordinary film. This, here's a character that we see age over decades, yeah. um, and who becomes a crack addict. Mm -hmm. And you had three days to shoot it. Mm -hmm. When you took it on, did you think you were going to get longer? Well, yeah, I, you know, it was never meant to be three days. It was because I had issues with visas because I'm British. So it was meant really? to be, yes. British? Oh, I, wow. I, didn't know. Yes. I didn't know that. I had no idea. You don't see the Bond I film? I thought it was from California. <laughs> I need some money. For what? That's my business. Don't you ask me no shit like that. What don't have no money. No, don't, don't lie to me, boy. I'm your mama. That bitch over there ain't no Kenya. I'm your blood, remember? Now, I ain't feeling good. I need something to help me out. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. So I never felt rushed. Yeah. It's only now that everybody's saying, oh my gosh, it was done in three days. That's yeah. insane. And I'm like, yeah, it is insane, actually. <laughs> but at the time, it seemed perfectly reasonable, you know, because Barry Jenkins, our director, was so calm and so reassuring. And he made me feel as though I had all the time in the world. So I never felt rushed. And I never felt like this was a feat that we had to achieve. It just felt perfectly doable which is weird because it was made on a tiny little budget and we didn't have enough time. And it was crazy, you know, because it was shot out of sequence. So I was going from older Paula to younger Paula to back to older to middle, to, you know, it was, yeah, it was kind of intense. But at the time I was just so in it as well that, you know, and I'd done so much research as well because, you know, I knew that it was going to be this tiny amount of time on, on, on a set. So I thought, let me make sure I know this character inside How did you out. research that? YouTube. Oh. YouTube, I think. I discovered, it's my first time discovering yeah. this, but it's an incredible mine of information. Like it has everything because you have people with their camera phones who go down into crack dens and record interviews with people. You know, information that you would never be able to get from any other source. So, because obviously, you know, I don't know anything about Miami. Um, I am in the 1980s or what have you, but I felt through these clips that I saw online that I got a real insight into those communities and those people's lives, and that's what helped me. That's Were you reluctant to play a black woman who's a crack addict? I was, yeah. I was because um, I grew up with very strong, intelligent, powerful women, and I don't f feel as though they're reflected enough on, certainly when I was growing up anyway, I think that has changed a lot now, but um, I, don't, I didn't feel as though they were reflected enough on screen. And so I sort of made it my mission that I was gonna make my choices based on portraying positive images of women in general and black women in particular. And I didn't feel as though a crack addict fitted into that. But then Barry Jenkins told me, you know, like you, it was, you know, it, I, he asked me to play his mum basically, and I thought, you know, here's someone who's emotionally invested in ensuring that this character is given her full complexity and her full humanity. Imagine you have a time capsule. You can put one great performance from a film in there. What would it be? I am obsessed with The Sound of Music. Oh. Oh. That is my favorite movie <laughs> really? of all time. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really sad, I'm yeah. really cheesy, and I'm really romantic, and Aww. that's what I like. So I'm gonna put Julie Andrews in there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because okay. no matter how I'm feeling, she makes me feel better, <laughs> you know? Is it over for you too, Naomi, when you've done a role? Um, just playing that character in Moonlight sometimes. over? Sometimes, I mean, yeah, I mean, Paula is over. I'm thankfully very relieved not to be in her skin anymore because I think she's racked with a lot of guilt, um, which is in a nice place to be. But, um, but uh, when I played Winnie Mandela um, in Long Walk to Freedom, that role stayed with me for months afterwards. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get her out of my skin at all because it was the experience also filming that in South Africa and the legacy of apartheid is so real and so present when you're fi filming there that it just gets under your skin in a really unpleasant way, actually. And also because Winnie's journey is so much fueled by hatred because she's been brutalized so much that it really leaves you in quite a nasty place that I actually had to work very hard to come out from. Hi, I'm Naomi Harris. Thank you so much for watching. For more roundtables, please subscribe to The Hollywood Reporter.